Welcome back. Andrea Lindquist with the Alzheimer's Family Center and the Mind and Memory Program is with us today to talk about the program and also some tips that we can have for caregivers who are caring for somebody who might have some memory issues. Welcome, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So let's talk a little bit about um, the Mind and Memory Program which is at Mission Hospital. Maybe give us just sort of an overview of what it's for. Sure thing. Uh, the Mind, Mind and Memory Program is a collaboration between the Alzheimer's Family Center in Huntington Beach as well as Mission Hospital in Mission Viejo. Okay. It's a, designed to be a half-day program for people that are experiencing both uh, memory concerns as well as a mental health issues such as depression, anxiety, grief. They could have been suffering from something for a long period of time. We have a lot of veterans with post-traumatic stress disorder and a whole wide variety of different issues that we address there. Okay, and then what, what does the half-day program con sort of consist of? Like if somebody wanted to know what you would be doing, give me an idea of like the agenda. Sure, so individuals come into our program and are given a very specialized treatment plan designed for them. And uh, the bulk of it consists of group work and we have some individual therapies. We also do enrichment activities and everyone's served a lunch or a uh, meal while they're there as well. Okay, so for instance, if you had someone with PTSD versus maybe an elderly person that has some memory issues, how do you separate them into different categories or do you put them all together or what do you do? So everybody there has a memory issue as well as a mental health issue. Okay. So they all have that in common. And there are varying levels of people uh, in terms of where they are in their disease process or how big of an impact it has in their day-to-day -day life, so we do differentiate the groups based on that, okay. but by and large everybody has that commonality, so okay. they kind of share that in common and that's part of the beauty of being in a group setting is that they have that uh, sense of feeling like someone else understands, you know, what their journey is like. Okay, all right, and then what about uh, some of the benefits? I mean, obvious, mm -hmm. obviously there's those that you can tell right away, Right. Uh, but what are some of the in-depth type of benefits that someone would, would uh, reap from going there. Yes, so of course there's the benefit of just having professionals that are very specialized in dealing with this, these unique issues, but there's also the kind of hidden benefit of having sort of a structured uh, activity to belong to, mm -hmm. as well as uh, activities that are designed to enhance your cognitive uh, implementation and awareness. Mm -hmm. Our participants see an increase in their overall mood as well as their ability to function in their everyday life uh, okay. through a decrease in feelings of depression and anxiety. Okay. So we are seeing those benefits as uh, for the participants that are coming through. Mm -hmm. And just being part of something, a purpose, um, and having that structure in their lives and an activity to go to mm -hmm. kind of helps uh, with their uh, maintaining their their life and, and their structure and their outside life as well. Now you mentioned there's some activities that mm -hmm. are being done. Uh, mm -hmm. Tell me what they are. Like uh, most of the enrichment activities have to do with brain exercises. We have a whole slew of staff that are there. So during that half day program, uh, a lot of our participants uh, liken it to being sort of in school. Okay. And they get a lot of teaching and instruction, a lot of uh, information about their disease process. Okay. And then all the intangibles of connecting with others as well. Okay, all right, well good. And you know, how do you know if this program is good for you? I mean, what are some of the things that people need to be mm -hmm. looking out for to decide whether or not they should show up? So the best thing to do is to really call our offices and an intake person will go over some of those questions right off the bat. Okay. Um, our number is 949-364-4203. Okay. You can call and connect with someone and they'll start that process. But then another first line of defense that's uh, really the best place to start is to get a memory checkup. Okay. We offer memory checkups at the Mind and Memory program as well as uh, throughout uh, Orange County at various partners that we work with. And a memory checkup is basically a questionnaire that the individual fills, fills out with a, a professional that's trained in this area mm -hmm. to go over uh, what memory concerns you're having and determine if those memory concerns are what we would consider normal aging okay. versus uh, things that might need further exploration with your doctor. Okay. So that's kind of the first line of defense. Okay, well perfect. So you did give the... Uh 
the numbers so hopefully people now let's talk about some tips for someone that might be noticing changes in the brain what are some mm -hmm. some things that they should be aware of well there's all sorts of changes that can happen as we age. Uh, again, some that are considered normal aging and some that aren't. But really, if you're noticing any differences in how uh, you're handling things, maybe forgetting people's names that you've known for a long period of time, uh, forgetting uh, important tasks or parts of conversations that have been going on, mm -hmm. those are all things that you would want to bring up during the memory checkup uh, when we go over that questionnaire. Um, just because you're having some challenges doesn't mean that you have dementia. Okay. There's a lot of uh, issues that might be going on. Say you're, uh, say you just lost a loved one, and you're experiencing some grief, or maybe it's even evolved into a depression. That can mimic some of the symptoms that we see with cognitive issues as well. So it's sort of scary to think about exploring that. People right. become sort of afraid to bring that up to their doctor. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's really important because some of these things can be treated with some medication and talk therapy right. versus uh, something that is more of a you know long-term progressive illness like a dementia. Wow okay now you also said something there's a couple things that you mentioned here the isolation so you you certainly could isolate yourself when you lose mm -hmm. a loved one right because mm -hmm. you're sad Right. So what about a different kind of isolation? Is there a different kind? Well, um, typically isolation would involve just uh, any time you're kind of withdrawing from people. And the reason for it can be varied. It might be based in fear. Mm -hmm. People might be afraid, okay, if I, uh, if people see that I'm having some problems, they might take away my driving privileges. Oh. They might take over my finances. I'm not gonna be able to live independently. Mm -hmm. But if you can get past some of those fears, and continue to stay connected with people, we find that that helps to improve your overall cognition okay. and helps people to function better overall as well. Right. Uh, so it's it's really ideal if, uh, especially with Valentine's Day coming up, if you get invited to go play pickleball or uh, do an activity with a friend, go to a movie or mm -hmm. participate in a bridge game. It's really important that you try and work past those fears of people seeing that you might be struggling right. and stay connected by, by doing those activities with your friends and family members, right. or pick up the phone and make a phone call and you know invite somebody to join you, mm -hmm. just to try and, and continue to stay connected, continue to socialize, which again gets back to the Mind and Memory program, right. uh, which that's one of our main goals is to have that connection and that socialization, because it's so important in keeping our brain healthy. Okay. And now, many people have caregivers mm -hmm. that uh, should be looking out for some of these signs as well. What would you advise the caregivers to do? So an estimated 16 million people are caring for someone with a memory impairment, which is a mm -hmm. huge number. Yeah. And they're often the first people that notice what's going on. So mm -hmm. we would recommend that the caregiver, and caregivers can call our center as well, and get information and can encourage. A lot of times I encourage uh, spouses, if they feel like their husband or wife is having an issue, partner with them and come in together to do a memory checkup. So mm -hmm. we'll do a checkup for both of uh, the people in the marriage. Uh, it's just a healthy thing to do to stay on top of where, kind of get a baseline of where your memory right. is functioning. Mm -hmm. And that's a nice way to, again, lessen the fear about doing it and uh, get uh, your spouse in there or your parent in there to come and have a memory checkup to, to see how things are going. and see what needs further exploration. You know, one thing I do want to touch on is the fear that you talked about because, mm -hmm. you know, I think people could be afraid to come into the center to mm -hmm. share the information for fear mm -hmm. that it would kind of backfire on them. Of course. So I'm assuming that the information you receive from them is all confidential. It's completely confidential. The memory checkups are completely free. Okay. You can, anybody can come in who's over the age of 55, okay. and you can, and in fact, you're encouraged to do it once a year. Yeah. Um, in addition, on the caregiver note, uh, for caregivers who are struggling with taking care of a loved one or have questions, uh, we were granted a, a very large amount of money to provide free counseling. Okay. So any caregiver uh, can come in, doesn't matter if you're affiliated with our program, if your loved one's affiliated, mm -hmm. any caregiver can come in and receive four free counseling sessions. Okay, I think we have a flyer on that. Is that 
Does that start, or this is the program itself, right? This is this is one of the workshops that's oh, okay. being offered through our program. All right. Uh, but we do, uh, and again, if you contact the center, they can give you any information you want about the free caregiver counseling. Oh, good. So there's two kinds. So now, what is this one in particular? It says advanced care planning. Yes, the advanced care planning. That is a workshop for older adults to make sure that their affairs are in order. And it's uh, sort of a piggyback on one of our other programs that we offer. We have lots of resources. Good. Okay, perfect. Well, wonderful. Well, thank you so much. We thank really appreciate you. the information, and uh, good luck. Thank you so much for having us and getting the word out there. All right, you're welcome. And remember that you can always contact Mission Hospital uh, in Mission Viejo to find out more about the memory and mind care program. Very we'll good. be right back after this.